Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahol, the Second Swing Golf. Today I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a master club fitter here at Second Swing Minnetonka. We've got a fun iron test today comparing everything from Ping. Uh, it's kind of new to the market now. Uh, a couple of them are a couple years old, but then we've got some brand new ones as well. So we'll mix them all in, going from sort of most forgiving to least forgiving. Can hit maybe five shots with each model, compare the differences, and um, you know see which Ping iron is maybe right for you uh, to get fit for this year in 2021. So. Uh, you know, Thomas, I know you're very familiar with all six of the models we're going to test today. Uh, what do you think we're going to expect to see here? Uh, I know some of it may be, you know, you can easy, easily predict some of it, but what do you think we're going to see? Yeah, you said like an easy, easy prediction would be probably distance. So there'll be a distance because there are some loft differences between these models. Yeah. I'm holding the Ping G710, the loft on that is like 29 and a half. Yeah. And the, at the other end of the spectrum, you've got the blueprint and the eye blade, where it's got 34 degrees of loft. Now, it's kind of interesting because Ping doesn't have that extreme range. There's other manufacturers that do have that stronger lofted 7 iron that is maybe 26 or 27 degrees in loft. They believe loft helps get ball up in there, and forgiveness is important. So the G710 is not extremely strong lofted. That's going to be the start of the test here, and then we'll kind of discuss each model, see what you think in terms of look and feel, and then we'll kind of break everything down at the end. So it should be a good one. Yeah, the other piece would be, as you mentioned, look and feel will be workability and forgiveness. Yeah. That will be kind of the, the differences that we're testing all these different mm -hmm. models. So we've got a nice wide range from Ping in 2021. Let's test them and see what we find out. Perfect. Um, as you're getting ready, Thomas, I'll uh, remind our viewers that uh, we would you know very much appreciate if you'd subscribe to our channel and give this video a like as well. Uh, we greatly you know yeah, appreciate the comments and we'd like to interact with you guys there as well. So uh, just trying to, you know, we love putting this together, right? And we uh, love getting the feedback, good or bad. So. Um, that way we can improve and help ultimately help you guys uh, play better. So, uh, Thomas, G710. Now, I think one thing I wanted to mention is the G425 crossover and the G710 look very similar. Uh, you know, part of that is the, you know, it's that stealth Hydro Pearl finish, yep. but um, they do look very similar in terms of size as well. And I know in the past we've done some G710 testing and you've really liked the long irons, how they play. Yeah, I was really interested in even possibly playing like a G710 four iron yeah. in my bag, because I really did kind of like that look. The black does make the club head look a little bit sleeker, even though, yes, it is the most forgiving model of them all. It is definitely the largest club head, but it doesn't make it look as large as it really mm -hmm. kind of plays. Yeah, I think that, you know, in terms of comparing it to like G700 was sort of the model prior. Uh, it, it, I don't know how much smaller the club head actually is, but you can, it, see, it does appear that way, I think, just based on that, that finish a darker finish versus that sort of gray um, in the previous G700, so. Yeah, that dark to gray contrast is really nice. Mm -hmm. All right, good stuff there across the board for G710. Uh, you talked about consistent distance there. Um, and then, you know, moving on to G425, I'm curious because the loft is only a half degree difference, so should see some fairly similar numbers there for G425 compared to G710, just in terms of at least distance anyway. Yeah, and then just touching on G710, most forgiving model, this will fit into a player with swing, slower swing speeds, need a little help to get the ball up in the air, and we're looking for extra distance out of, out of a 7 iron, mm -hmm. get them more in that optimal dynamic loft range, because we know there's 29 and a half degrees of loft on this club. Mm -hmm. Yep, so that's, and I know that's, you know, the most common range of golfers that would fit into that club, and then kind of, you, you might have some crossover into G425 as well in terms of, you know, might be a same, the same profile golfer that fits into maybe both of these, but um, I know the, you know, I'll, I'll probably get your impression on the looks as well, but G425 does have a different look to it. Yeah, well, let's hit G425. Thomas, there were three shots in. I can, I'm not seeing the, the, the draw maybe as much with the G425 as there was with G710. Yeah, G710 has a little bit more offset on it than the G425, and I can kind of notice that at okay. a little bit there too. Yeah, I might even had one miss hit with the G710 in there. I didn't even, didn't even notice it because it, it's so forgiving. Yeah, so. right, yeah. I mean, both are forgiving, clearly. Uh, just maybe the, just didn't notice that draw that uh, the G710 seemed to have pretty consistently. Yeah. And both of them, black dot, so they're both at a, at a standard. Yeah. Well, all these clubs are going to be black dot, so they're mm -hmm. all at a standard line angle, so that shouldn't change too much. Right. 
That one still carried over 200 yards, even though that was probably my slowest swing speed so far. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice the little one-handed finish there too. So, Yeah, so Beginning. there's the dispersion there. So there's, we were talking about maybe about the draw not quite turning over as much there on average. Uh, but what did you think, you know, looks-wise? Because, you know, the G, big part of the G425 is, you know, compared to like G410 and G400, it's smaller club head. But still, still able to produce that like high MOI, actually a little bit higher MOI than previous models. So, what do you think about that look? Yeah, it's a very clean looking game improvement club. Now, it's it's clear that it's a little more game improvement because I don't play a game improvement iron, and the top line is a little thicker than what I'm kind of used to. But it's I think heel to toe is just a little bit sleeker. It definitely is sleeker than G710. Comparing it to say G410, it's just a little bit sleeker. But as mm -hmm. you mentioned. MOI is important, and it's kind of interesting to see. I think I hit that last one was a miss it. It still carried over 200 yards. Not saying that it's more forgiving that G710, but I had that one miss it with the G710 yeah. that didn't quite carry over 200 right. yards. So you think you kind of, you know, each club you sort of had the one uh, maybe outlier here that was just a little bit face a little bit more open than the others, and the result is what like five yards less uh, on carry distance on them. I mean. Okay, like, yep. I think you'll take that, right? <laughs> it's good. So. I mean, when the ball's gone that far, I mean, mm -hmm. it's important what we want it to be kind of forgiving there as well. But yeah. typically, these two models wouldn't fit a player that's going to hit it maybe this far. Yeah. My golf swing, my golf swing, I'm just going to keep it consistent as we're going through. But in future testing, it'd be fun to do like a G425 versus a G710 with a slower swing player. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And compare the differences. Yeah, which yeah. I, we can definitely get that in the works, and we will get that in the works. Yeah. Um, on the channel. So, all right, moving on now. I-500, which actually is uh, part of the, con the combo that I have in my bag, so this will be interesting. All right, well, Thomas, we're definitely seeing trends emerge here. I think we talked about, you know, how the draw wasn't quite showing up with the G425, there was a little bit of a draw on G710, and then I think we really saw that kind of start to take place here with I500. As you can see on the map here, there's a certain, definitely a trend over to the left. Yeah, and this is kind of where Ping kind of makes their transition from their kind of game improvement clubs to their distance players iron category. Mm -hmm. And for sure, when I'm looking down at this club, I could noticeably looking down, I'm like, that looks look quite a lot smaller than the mm -hmm. other two models right off, right off the bat there too. It's something that's more appealing to what I like to see at a address. And you'll notice that I like to normally hit a draw. Well, it did draw every single time. Yep. I think I even said, why is this drawing every single time? Yeah. Like, well, it's more workable. Yeah, exactly. Makes sense. So. Um, just a quick, you know, we're three clubs down, but like we're talking, so the lofts are all within one degree here. You know, we went from 29 and a half with the G710 to 30 with the G425 and then 30 and a half with the i500. So we're seeing, you know, your club speed's pretty consistent and the ball speed is staying very close together as well. So like, you know, these, the, in terms of the loft, we're seeing minimal to no, um, like launch angles have been relatively similar as well. So we're seeing that, you know, this is almost, it's darn close to apples to apples in terms of the loft and then your club yep. speed as well. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. The i500, you just know it's a little bit more spin with mm -hmm. that one, even though it did have kind of like the highest ball speed of, of the three. Um, but you notice it was spinning about 600 RPMs more than the yeah. other two game improvement models. And that's kind of the, the big takeaway there. And you usually like to say every degree of loft is about three or four yards. Well, you're going to compare G710 to I500, we'll notice we're at there you go. like three yards right there. Yeah. The, the surprising one right off the bat here is G425. It's impressive. It actually was going further than the G710. Mm -hmm. And if we actually look at the club speed, you will notice the club speed was the slowest of the three as well. So it's kind of interesting how the G425 was actually going just a little bit further, yeah. even though this club, club speed was a little bit slower with that model. Yeah, could so. be due to the that new club face design, that variable face thickness uh, club face design, the G425 that they've you know implemented this year into this generation. But Yeah, um, it's, a, it's a hot club with not a crazy de-lofted amount of loft for a game right. from the club. Which yeah. is, I, I think that's that rare combination that really isn't out there uh, besides G425. But uh, now we can get into the I-210, which is kind of the second part of my combo set. Man, Thomas, your dispersion, 
I'm just gonna bring this up quick. I-210. Now, it's been, what is it, 2018 maybe? Was the player, was the I-210? It's been, it's a couple years old. Yeah. Um, maybe there's a reason they don't have a new one. I wouldn't change it either. I mean, if I was gonna hit like that all day, I would not change the technology at all. I mean, yeah. 200 was good, I-210 just a little bit better, and this performed really well in fittings. Mm -hmm. And it's been that, that little higher spin consistency with this. Yes, club. for and sure. It's been a really consistent club, and I'm not surprised that those three swings right off the bat were really exceptional. Yeah. Good. Well, no pressure. You got two more swings. Can right. I keep that dispersion like that? Let's do our best. <laughs> Thomas, that is a remarkable dispersion. Uh, and I know that last one you said you didn't quite catch perfectly, and you can see just a little bit short on the map. But I mean, come on, like how small that circle is. Um, pretty consistent golf club. Yeah, that actually that last swing was a really bad swing. You notice that ball speed dropped to 124.8. Mm -hmm. The first three or four other swings were around about 128. So quite noticeable with regards to the change there in, in the ball speeds. So we know that we miss hit it, but that spin consistency, a little bit, little bit more spin consist consistency there again, plus or minus 130, spinning about 5,700. I mean, that's, that's gonna be really hard to beat in today's test. A little disappointed that that last swing was a miss hit because it was going on the exact same mm -hmm. line. So that's what stood out to me as well. Right. I mean, and that was the different. I mean, I think you probably lost what you know, four to five yards carry there, um, something like that. But I know you like to say that rule of every you know degree of loft is three to four yards carry, and you saw clubs right around thirty degrees were carrying about two hundred yards or so, a little bit more than that maybe, and then. I-210 when struck well is right under 190, so that seems to add up mathematically yep. with your scale there. Yeah, it was, uh, it was basically yeah, three to four yards every degree loft. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was pretty true to the test there. A little more spin because there's more loft on the club. Mm -hmm. Now we can get to I-Blade, one degree higher at 34 degrees. Another remarkable dispersion from I-Blade there particularly this time in terms of distance consistency with the carry. As you can see, I mean, you had these four, and then one you just went a little bit, you know, what, like a couple of yards further, but these four here are essentially the same carry distance. I mean, if we could bring, if you bring up the, the spread of shots here, we've got carry <laughs> distance. That's four in a row, 188. That's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. 188, yeah. 188, 188, 188, and then you're 190. Yeah. I don't know, what, what are you doing, Thomas? 190, come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but uh, so what do you now? I wanted to ask you about the feel, um, being that you know this one and I two ten, not forged right. They have that elastomer kind of in, I guess the cavities of each one. Um, and I've you know in using two ten, I think it really softens that feel quite a bit. What do you think? Yeah, it doesn't sound as loud either. Right. But yeah, it 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 does feel pretty good, knowing that it's cast. Um, but it does perform really, really well off the club face. And then that consistency you can yeah. see there. One thing that stood out to me also with iBlade and i210 is they do look fairly similar to look down at. This is just slightly sleeker lines. Mm -hmm. So slightly thinner top lines, slightly smaller heel to toe. But you'll notice how the, the, the numbers essentially were almost identical. And I'm looking at that dispersion circle there with i210 and the blue circle, and then I'm looking at the, the orange circle. Mm -hmm. Now I did have that one miss hit with i210, that one that was yeah. down the bottom. But you'll notice otherwise how they'll go the exact same distance. I mean, you're, yeah. yeah, all of these are just, you know, terrifying the flag stick with how close they are. But yeah. um, now you, you mentioned sleeker shape, sleeker top line. We're going to get to something really sleek now. That is the blueprint uh, to close out our test here. Glad you saved that for last. <laughs> Well, Thomas, I think with Blueprint, we saw a little bit of that punishment for a miss hit. Um, with your first couple down mm -hmm. here on the map, um, and then you know the next three, you hit right next to each other out there. So these are the, this is actually two shots, uh, believe it or not, right there. That's two different dots. So, uh, But I wanted to ask you again on the feel, because now we got a forged iron. Is there a noticeable difference between Blueprint and then like I-210 and I-Blade? Yeah, it's, it's definitely softer. Um, what I kind of noticed, is it just felt like on my miss hits the club face felt like it was just like deflecting around a little bit more mm -hmm. at impact. I think that's why I got that those two that were so far short and left there. It's just yeah. just didn't feel very good. And mm -hmm. I lost I lost ball speed. 
those are the two lowest ball speed shots that I hit of the day. Um, and, but there's potential. I mean, if you're a very, very good ball striker, you can hit these. Mm -hmm. You just got to know you got to hit it good every time. Right. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. the, you know, I, that's the term Larry Bobka likes to use when talking about putters is resistance to twist, right? In terms of MOI. And yeah. there's comparatively, the blueprint has very little MOI versus the other models in this test. So you talked about that your club face may be twisting at impact. And if you don't catch the center, that's what's going to happen here versus you know, your G425, your G710, any of the models, mm -hmm. it's going to be more stable. Um, but I've got these numbers up here, Thomas. Uh, I want to say the club speed, pretty darn consistent. You're in the 89 range, every single club. Uh, Perfect. So this will be a good test. Yeah. So this is going to be a good indication of what these clubs are capable of. And uh, I think there's a clear, there's sort of like there's three players irons, right? And then and there's sort like of three one, kind of, yeah. And then there's sort of three in terms of loft anyway, there's three that are kind of in its own group, right? The blueprint, iBlade, i210. And then there's three that are sort of in their own group in terms of loft with the i500, g425 and g710. So yeah, um, ping doesn't have a club between 30 and a half and 33. You're right. Mm -hmm. And you've got their the 29 and a half, the 30 and the 30 and a half. Mm -hmm. And then you've got their 33, 34, 34. Yeah. And that's, you can kind of see it right there with regards to kind of the, the distances. You can see mm -hmm. there's a gap between, uh, I guess. Sort of that 195 to 200 range. There's not really a lot of shots in there. Uh, but, you know, you did see that low 190s carry distance to what kind of high 180s is where a lot of these shots ended up falling with uh, the higher loft and iron shots. But um, maybe we can, I'll expand these numbers here. Okay, so we don't even need to really talk about club speed because we know that was within one mile an hour with each, with each one there too. So ball speed, if we were going to put it in order, it's actually kind of interesting. The i500 gave us the highest ball speed of all the models there. So it was performing pretty well. So it was keeping up with those other two models that just had a little bit stronger mm -hmm. loft on them. Um, G425 and G710 that is. So you'll notice those, are, those three are separated by about one, essentially mm -hmm. one mile an hour. Yep. Um, and then if you look at the other grouping, the other grouping is essentially separated by one mile an hour again. Yep. And that's because they're only separated by that one degree of loft there yep. too. The, the blueprint, yes, it stands out. It has the least amount of ball speed of mm -hmm. the three, but it's really not that far kind of behind. Right. I had a couple in there, like 124, and then I had one in there of 128 and 129. So you can see that consistency number. So if we look at that plus or minus number, that I believe is the highest consistency number of them all. Mm -hmm. It's the least become a club. Makes sense. Yep. That's uh, the widest range yep. of ball speeds there with the blueprint. Correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of interesting that iBlade performed the best with regards to consistency. Plus yep. or minus 0 0.8. I had four shots in there that were 188, 188, yep. 188, 188. So that definitely kind of stood out to me there as, as well. Um, iBlade and 210 were going pretty similar distances there with regards to kind of numbers. I mean, all three of them were going pretty sim similar distances on the, yeah. on the good shots. Where the other three game improvement clubs were going pretty similar distance there again. Mm -hmm. So it was either a 200 carry or it was either about a 188 carry, it seemed yep. like. There is that yeah. range for sure. Again, like we talked about, these top three are going to be closer together in terms of performance with like distance. Uh, I think you notice a little bit more forgiveness with G710 and G425 maybe versus I500. But then we also notice on the map, if I bring that up, that you know the I500 did turn over a little bit more than the other two, noting that workability piece, right? Because you hit that draw, yep. you could see with maybe I500, I210, iBlade, and Blueprint that that ball did end up more left of the center line than those first two models. Yeah, let's talk about that dispersion a little bit. So you can kind of see G710, the most forgiving, the, probably the one that's going to probably go the straightest of them all. It was probably on average right in the middle. So that's mm -hmm. the, the white circle. We mentioned with G425 how I did have a little bit of a harder time turning that over. I just left it just a little bit yep. to the right. That might have been me adjusting to the offset on the club. With the G710, it is relatively large mm -hmm. from what I'm kind of used to. Now, at the other end of the spectrum, Blueprint, there's nothing. So it right. definitely is kind of range. But you can kind of see how it kind of trends. So if I was going to draw a line, it's kind of like it's on, it's like it's like on, a, on an angle here. So we've got the straight balls. Then we started to get a club that has a little bit more of a workability to it. And then you'll notice these other ones were kind of my typical 
um, ball flight. Now the ball was not going as far, so it doesn't have the chance to get further to the left. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is, I mean, you, you saw with more workable clubs and what you're used to hitting, you did see that drop here and that kind of distance range too, where in that 180s for in terms of carry. And then, you know, I think it's not a surprise that the largest circle here is going to be the blueprint one. Uh, even though it's going the shortest, but I think that's just because the, the forgiveness piece, there's just not as much there. Yep. Um, well, even though these clubs are farther down the fairway, uh, they are a little bit smaller, you know, the spurs of circles compared to the blueprint. Yeah, it's, it, it's clear that blueprint, probably the least forgiving, it's the least forgiving club. Mm -hmm. Clear that the other ones were dressed with more kind of forgiving, but the clubs that I kind of play, I, I play kind of like a, I play a combo set. I play a combo set between a cavity back and a blade. Mm -hmm. You can see it, iBlade and the uh, i210, yeah. smaller circles. Right. Probably something that I'm just kind of used to looking down at mm -hmm. too. So it's a good way to kind of analyze and see kind of what club a player would fit into as well. It's, you know, it's important for players to, to hit them and compare them, but you can definitely see trends right off the bat that, yeah. hey, a oh, club yeah. that I like the look of or that I'm used to playing, no, no, no doubt it was performing the best. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, pings. They've got six great iron models out there to be fit into right now. Um, and as we've talked about with, you know, some of these are years old, like a few years old in terms of when they were released, but they're still their most recent in that category because they perform really well. And I think we saw that, especially with iBlade and i210, those dispersion patterns are terrific. And then I finally, I want to touch on the spin rate differences and the height differences between these different models. They do, as I mentioned, fit yeah. into different players. So you can see that the iBlade, the Blueprint, the 210, spinning the most. There's most amount of loft on those models. That's mm -hmm. just science. It's just yeah. they're designed to spin a little bit more. But if you look at the other models, you can see the i500 kind of splits between them. Yeah. It's about 4900. And then you look at the more game improvement models, you notice a little bit less spin. But I did want to bring up height too, because height is important, especially when mm -hmm. there is less loft on a golf club. You know, even though there's less loft on the G710 and the 425, they are designed with the way they've change the center of gravity around to still fly fairly high in the air. So mm -hmm. you would notice that today, if we look at the height, the three that did fly the highest were the three strongly lofted clubs. So there's definitely no concern with regards to mm -hmm. loft jacking per, per se, it's because they're still designed to fly in the air. So not only yeah. have they, you know, they're going to go further, they're going to be more forgiving, but yeah. they are going to fly higher to increase that descent angle coming yeah. down the green, I so mean, you can think of stomp power. Right, I mean, you can look at these height, I mean, they're all very similar. You have a range from 105 to 117, and it's not, you know, all these lofts are different, but, you know, your 29 and a half degree seven iron in the G710 is not going to fly, you know, lower just because of the loft, as we saw here. You're, in the test, it was actually the highest height in the test with the G710, so uh, those concerned maybe about that, or maybe if they have a seven iron that's too strong, uh, at least in terms of the ping set, the, the ping range here, you're going to hit you know, the same height or roughly the same height. It's going to be, this might give you a little bit more distance out there too, which you might need. Yeah, and this, this, was, a, this was a great test. Uh, I mean, ping gives a great option whether that you're looking for forgiveness, where you're looking for workability, where you're looking for distance, where you depend, really fits any kind of player out there too. So there's definitely some great options. In 2021, we've got six iron options for ping. Mm -hmm. It's going to be exciting to see what they come out with in the future, but for now, there's some winners out there and they perform well and there's a reason why they're staying with them. Absolutely, yeah, golfers interested in one of the six models from Ping, stop into one of our Second Swing stores to get fit by someone like Thomas or any one of our master fitters here, or you can call our online fitting and support team and one of our experts will be sure to help you out and get you into the right Ping iron set for your game in 2021 and beyond. So Thomas, thank you for hitting all the shots today and explaining all the data for us.